Exodus. What does the title of Exodus mean? Ek in Greek, ek is the word out of or out. It's a preposition out. Hodos means the way out. The way is hodos, so it's the way out. Okay, exit like exit of the room or something. So Exodus means the way out. And the book of Exodus is about the is about the way out of what? The way out of Egypt. Okay, so this is the way out of Egypt. And this is going to be, um, well, the way out of Egypt is largely what the, the, the text is about. Uh, the background, there's basically five movements, big movements, in the book of Exodus. And these five major things pull together. And the first would be the birth and call of Moses. We haven't met Moses yet. And in the beginning of Exodus, we meet Moses as a baby. And uh, Moses, the birth and call of Moses. And then a couple, three chapters there in uh, in on the call of Moses. So Moses becomes a big player for the rest of the Pentateuch. And so uh, this is, a, by the way, when I use the term Pentateuch, do you guys know what that is, the Pentateuch? Penta, yeah, William? Yeah, first five books of the Bible. Penta is what, like Pentagon, five. Pentateuch means book. So Pentateuch means the first five books, or five books. Um, I should say this, though. Um, did Moses ever see a book in his life? And the answer is, a book like this with a binding, or it used to have a binding, uh, the book like this that has a binding and things, um, those, the binding of books started about 100 AD. 100 AD, you start having books bound together. Before that, what did people have? Scrolls, okay? So Moses would have been writing on scrolls and stuff. So, <laughs> excuse me, oftentimes in the Bible, when it says, you know, the book of the covenant or something, it's really talking about the scroll. Okay, but they translate in book in our modern language, but you've got to gotta make a shift there. But the birth and call of Moses, and he writes the Pentateuch, so he's going to be the author of the first five books of the Bible. Now, ten plagues of Egypt. Moses goes down into Egypt, and basically there's going to be a duel between the God of Israel and the God Pharaoh. Pharaoh is considered a god. And <coughs> excuse me. And the, basically... The question is going to be, is it going to be the God Pharaoh or is it going to be the God Jehovah? Are you going to fear the God who you can see in Pharaoh who's got a chariot that can run you down? Or are you going to fear the God who you can't see that you don't know? And things. And so the, basically God establishes himself. And so a lot of the plagues are going to be this dueling between Pharaoh and God. And God will establish himself in the ten plagues of Egypt. So we'll, we'll look at those ten plagues. Um, the crossing of the Reed Sea. A big and major event when Israel leaves uh, Egypt, they cross the Reed Sea. I put Reed Sea just to kind of be ornery. You guys probably know it as the Red Sea, uh, but the Reed Sea. We don't know actually exactly which sea it was, and so there's the, it, actually the, the Hebrew term is Yom Suf, which means Sea of Reeds. The, the Hebrew text does not say Red Sea. The Hebrew text says Sea of Reeds, and so I see the Reed Sea. So they cross the Reed Sea, God splits the water, they go across, the Egyptians are drowned, and that's, that's a big deal. So the crossing of the Red Sea, very big deal for Israel. That's when they actually leave Egypt. And the, the Exodus event is, let me just finish this, and then we'll talk a little bit more about that. The tabernacle. Once they cross the Reed Sea, they get out into the wilderness, God they, has them build a, a, a tent for him so that he can dwell in their midst. And so you get this tabernacle structure, which we skipped over a lot of the details because every board and every plank is measured and, and they describe it in great detail. Is anybody from um, Lancaster area in Pennsylvania at all? And things. Now you've got, there's an actual tabernacle structure down there, isn't there? I've been told that in the Lancaster area, some of the Amish and stuff have actually built an actual tabernacle you can go through down there in the Lancaster area down in Pennsylvania. And so I've always wanted to go down and see it and things. So, but the tabernacle is built, and uh, this God will dwell in the midst of his people kind of thing with this, this portable, it's kind of like a portable temple, you know, and then they moves, God moves with them. Peter? Uh, um, I don't know about that. Some people have suggested that manatees as far as what the, uh, the skins were, the sea cows and what that is. I, I get really iffy on a lot of the animals. I, you know, when I say we're, we're 3,000 years later, and, and you, you it's hard to, the animals are hard, you know what I'm saying? Because they have, first of all, different animals over there, and so sometimes the translation's hard. So yes, sea cows has been translated, manatees and stuff like that. 
Um, I, the honest truth is, when I was over there, I didn't see any manatees. I think they may have them there, possibly, but I don't think they're um, there. There may be, it may be something else, okay? But all I'm saying is, I kind of back off on that one. I just, I go like, I'm not sure what it was, you know, the honest truth is. So, but sorry about, I don't know. I have to be honest with you and stuff. I mean, I, there's a big discussion over what the animals, is, and I, I've never been convinced by any of the discussions, so I'm sorry. But anyways, yeah, anyways. It comes up with a lot of the animals. When we get into Leviticus, they're going to be talking about the rabbit and the hare and stuff, and it just, um, there's trouble when you translate between languages with animals, especially over cultures long like that. So, good question. Bombed out. Okay, so giving of the Torah. The giving of the Torah, the law at Sinai. The word Torah is a Jewish word. If you, you, you talk to the Jewish people and you say, tell us about the Torah, uh, largely it's the law, the law at Sinai. And uh, this is the Ten Commandments and the things that were done there at Sinai. This is the big major covenant. With the Genesis we had, what covenant did we have in Genesis? What was the major covenant in Genesis? It was called the covenant with Abraham or the Abrahamic covenant. The Abrahamic covenant was based on what? Circumcision, right? And Abraham circumcised his child and then therefore the Abrahamic covenant, the land, the seed multiplying and then being blessing to all nations. That was the Abrahamic covenant. It was reiterated to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and on down. Here is going to be the Sinaitic covenant, the Sinai, the covenant of Sinai. And this one's going to be based not on circumcision so much as on obedience. And so God will give his law and then the, basically the people are supposed to keep that law that covenant that he gave him, and there will be specifications. Now, by the way, you guys have just read Numbers. Did the Israel keep the law? No. Are they breaking it? It's right off the bat. They're breaking the law and stuff. So this uh, this gets to be a problem here. This one, this uh, Sinaitic covenant, giving of the law. Okay, so those are some things there. Now, I want to jump over next to, before we do this, though, I want to kind of step back and look at the whole big thing of Exodus here. The book of Exodus is a great book in the Old Testament. It is a... In the New Testament, in the New Testament, what is the great redemptive act of the New Testament? What is the great redemptive act in the New Testament? First of all, who does the great redemptive act? Who does it in the New Testament? What's the person's name? Jesus, Jesus okay. And, and in Jesus' life, we've got four Gospels that give us all this stuff. What what in his life is like considered the climax, the great redemptive act would be what? Rise from the dead. Yeah, his death and resurrection, right? His crucifixion, his dying on our behalf, and the resurrection from the dead. Okay, so that's the great redemptive act in the New Testament is Christ dying for our sins and raising again from the dead. Defeating death, that's, that's a pretty big uh, enemy to defeat. And so Jesus rises from the dead, giving us hope and things like that. In the Old Testament, what is the great redemptive act in the Old Testament? In the Old Testament, it's Moses leading the people out of bondage, out of bondage of Egypt. So the great redemptive act in the Old Testament is going to be this exodus, this coming out of Egypt. And so we'll come back to that and just show you then this is a huge, in other words, as Jesus' death and resurrection were huge in the New Testament, so the coming out of Egypt is huge for the Israelites. They will go back over and over again. God delivered us out of the hands of the Egyptians and out of the hands of Pharaoh.